Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. What you are about to see contains disturbing and violent images that may be too intense for some viewers. Tonight, the world's most shocking moments caught on tape, too. going to die. I thought this was my last birthday. And how could anyone live through this? All on the world's most shocking moments caught on tape, too. No matter where you live, no matter how much money you have, no matter your race or religion, whether you're male or female, there is one thing we all have in common. At any moment, our world can be turned completely upside down. Violence, catastrophe, devastation can befall each of us without warning, turning the most ordinary of days into moments forever frozen in our minds. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell, and this is the second edition of the world's most shocking moments, caught on tape. Seoul, South Korea. The Buddhist monks at this temple are split into rival groups, creating a power struggle for control. The gang-like feud between the normally peaceful monks resulted in a court decision ordering the dissident monks to leave. Instead, the rebel group seizes control of the temple, attacking the other monks and throwing them out. Just before dawn, the police move in, firing tear gas and using water cannons. The gray-robed monks fight back vehemently, throwing firebombs, rocks, and other blunt and deadly weapons. To protest the police action, this monk will use the long, sharp blade to slash his abdomen. Another monk pours gasoline on himself, threatening to set himself afire. A mechanically driven ladder brings the police to the battle, but their assault is about to turn disastrous. Overloaded, the car topples causing serious but not fatal injuries to the police. The police finally prevail, and the monastery riot is brought to a conclusion. Route 76, New Jersey, just outside Philadelphia. A man is being chased by police for drunk and reckless driving. Sirens blare. A police car pulls in front of him. Clearly, he has no escape, so he pulls onto the shoulder as if he's going to surrender, but it's a trick. Traveling at a speed of nearly 50 miles an hour, he makes a desperate leap for freedom. Bouncing hard off the pavement, he is hit by the rear tire of his own car. The man is arrested and taken to a hospital. After six days in intensive care, he is moved to recovery, where he escapes. And for the past five years, he has been a fugitive from justice. 
Sao Paulo, Brazil. A bank robber has the sharp blade of a long knife at a female hostage's throat. With lightning speed, a gutsy plainclothes policeman ends the dangerous standoff. Thanks to the daring cop, the hostage was unharmed. The bank robbers were convicted of attempted robbery, kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon. Melbourne, Australia. A very disturbed man brandishing an antique sword claimed to be an immortal hero and dared police to shoot him. First, the police tried to reason with him. Then the man's girlfriend attempted to bring the incident to a peaceful conclusion. When she was unsuccessful, the police tried again. When this final plea fell on deaf ears, the police began to use force. First, they began to shower him with pepper spray. But more spray found its way into the crowd than onto the man. Next, they shoot him with beanbag pellets and mace. The man still stood his ground. Finally, the police unleashed one of their dogs. And once police had their man under control, they took him for psychiatric evaluation. In addition, the pepper spray that was used on him caused several people in the street to be taken to the hospital. Bogota, Colombia. A police video sting operation captures two street thugs as they hold up a helpless couple at night point. A plainclothes policeman grabs the would-be thief and a second officer tackles his accomplice. Others on the street jump into the battle and help detain the robbers. When the crooks went on trial, it was this video that helped convict the duo of armed robbery. The police had control of the sting operation. But sometimes, even after an arrest is successful, unexpected danger can still strike. Los Angeles, California. A suspect in a drive-by shooting has just been captured. But for this officer, the arrest almost turns deadly. While retrieving the suspect's weapon from the roof, the gun accidentally discharges in the policeman's hand. Fellow officers rush to his aid. He was immediately admitted to a local hospital where he was treated and released. Green Bay, Wisconsin. The police SWAT team has been called to the home of a distraught man who is threatening to kill himself. Their plan is to throw a non-lethal flashbang grenade inside the house to stun the suicidal man. The SWAT team approaches the house, and as they enter, one policeman pulls the pin on the grenade. Inside the house, the SWAT team smells natural gas. If they set off the grenade, the entire house will explode. They retreat to a safe distance. In haste, the officer tries to put the pin back in the grenade. As he does, the grenade accidentally falls into his pocket. The grenade explodes. The officer is stunned. At first, he doesn't realize the extent of his injuries. Suddenly, it hits him, and he collapses. The power of these grenades can produce a concussion that will stun anybody within 20 feet. And at the epicenter, it can create a searing heat of 2,000 degrees. He's quickly taken to a nearby hospital, suffering from second-degree burns on his upper leg and stomach. The suicidal man was later captured and taken for psychiatric evaluation. The officer returned to active duty six weeks later. Coming up, a balloon ride almost turns tragic. An animal attack you won't believe anyone could survive. 
Spectators run for their lives as a car crashes into the stands. Chinese politicians go berserk. And how could anyone live through this? When the world's most shocking moments, caught on tape, too, continues. Most of us are not thrill seekers. We have too much sense to ride a motorbike up a mountain, ski over steep rocks, or race in a hot air balloon. But we love to watch others push the envelope because we know there's always a chance that the envelope might push back. The French Alps. Every year, 60 challengers driving special motorbikes try to reach the top of this mountain. The champion of last year's climb begins his run to the peak. Halfway up, he loses control of his bike. At first, it appears as if the spectators will be safe. But then the bike picks up speed and tumbles into the crowd. The careening path of the 300-pound motorbike takes it directly into five spectators. Miraculously, the one person hurt suffered only superficial injuries. Four, three, Thompson Pass, two, Alaska. One. The Extreme Ski Championships. Competitor Garrett Bartelt finds himself far behind. He needs a great final run and a big score to have a chance at the top spot. Knowing that the judging is based on the difficulty of the downhill line you choose, Bartelt picks an extremely steep and rugged part of the mountain. Very early in the run, Bartelt's ski catches a hole, and he begins one of the most horrific falls ever caught on tape. Tumbling wildly down the mountain, Bartelt had the presence of mind to try and stay airborne, to avoid rocks, but he wasn't entirely successful. We need serious help up there. By the time his near-fatal fall ended, Bartelt had suffered multiple broken bones, fractures in both legs, and a battered and bruised upper torso. My thoughts when I tumbled down was, I'm in trouble. So I really had to try to get my feet underneath me. I knew there was cliffs coming below because I had scoped the line out with binoculars. I was twisting to the left, to the right, but once I broke my leg then, I was ragged off. My leg actually came up behind me and the heel of my boot popped me in right above the ear here. The following season, Bartelt returned to competition, but always in the back of his mind is the run that almost cost him his life. New Mexico. A 44-year-old woman working on the ground crew for this hot air balloon barely survived a terrifying fall. Her hand became caught as the balloon took off. The pilot, realizing how dangerous the situation was, tried to land. But the woman couldn't hang on and fell nearly 40 feet to the ground. The Salmon River is a popular spot for whitewater racing, a sport in which boats often travel over 100 miles an hour. In the straightaway, early in its run towards the Roaring Rapids, this crew had their boat totally under control, but disaster lay just ahead. Right in the middle of Ladder Creek Rapids, they ran into trouble, a big rock. Unable to avoid the rock, 
the boat flips on top of it. The crew survived the collision, and the boat didn't immediately sink. Keeping his head, one crew member threw a safety buoy into the water, but there was no time to waste. The moment they swam free, the boat began to sink. The crew members were in a fight for their lives. As they were swept away in the raging water, a rescue boat was immediately dispatched, and all three men were pulled to safety. Off the coast of Australia, a tanker attempts to rescue a sinking pleasure yacht, but accidentally makes things much worse by ramming it. The crews tried to save what they could, but the yacht was going down so quickly that salvage was virtually impossible. In fact, the yacht went down so fast that the crew members were sucked under with it. Despite their brush with death, the crew of four survived. Pushan, South Korea. A liquefied petroleum gas station is burning. Then the fire reaches a large fuel canister. Windows are shattered and dozens of cars destroyed in the mammoth explosion. Twenty people are injured, but countless more felt the awesome power of the blast. Auckland, New Zealand. At a welterweight championship bout, Sean Sullivan defeated his opponent with a seventh round TKO. But the loser clearly didn't think the fight's outcome was fair, so he began a second one. This wild punch so infuriates Sullivan's fans that they decide to get in on the action. And then, unbelievably, the defeated boxer begins slugging it out with him. This isn't good. This is why people don't come to uh, boxing anymore. Three of the boxer's associates pled guilty to assault, but he is still awaiting trial. While brutality is to be expected at a prize fight, one place you don't expect to see punching and kicking is in City Hall. But we found that the battle that's waged in a boxing ring is often no more violent than what goes on in the halls of government. Taipei, Taiwan. The newly elected mayor was being sworn in when simmering tensions exploded into a spectacular brawl between two political parties. The new mayor's opposition demanded that he swear allegiance to the Taiwanese Independence Party flag. When politicians from his own party ripped the flag down, the punches began to fly. As the battle starts to go against one man, he takes off his shoe and uses it as a club. Once it's ripped from him, one of his rivals flings it aside. By the time order was restored, four members of the city council had to be hospitalized, but only with minor injuries. Back in the United States, a New Jersey town meeting seems normal until the mayor's wife is nominated to head a committee. When someone in the audience insults her, the mayor hops over the railing and punches out the heckler. Then another person decides to take on the mayor. And all-out chaos ensues. There has been perhaps no place on earth where political tensions ran higher than in Belfast, Northern Ireland. In fact, the climate there was so violent that at times there was no escape from it, even at a funeral. On this day, three IRA soldiers are being laid to rest. Suddenly, there is an explosion. A terrorist is hurling grenades into the crowd. The mourners try and capture the fleeing suspect, who fires at the crowd. 
desperate to escape, he heaves a grenade at his pursuers. Police were able to take the terrorist into custody before the crowd could exact their own revenge. Still to come, a horrifying plane accident, shocking courtroom violence, animals out of control. And how could anyone survive this? When the world's most shocking moments, caught on tape two, returns. For some people, there is nothing as exciting as a machine pushing the outer limits of speed. And as you'll see, the ultimate test often comes when thrill seekers try to exceed those boundaries. Sacramento, California. This jet car is named Muy Caliente, which is Spanish for very hot. The driver had no idea how appropriate that name would be. With a crash and burn at over 236 miles per hour, he was lucky to suffer only minor injuries. Del Plata, Argentina. Incredible footage from a car race in which a driver is thrown through the window of his car. Tossed over 50 feet, the driver was injured, but fortunately, the distance of the throw kept him from getting hit by the wildly tumbling car. New Zealand. An ace dirt track driver didn't walk away from this race with a trophy, but he did walk away with his life. While speeding through a tricky turn, his car flipped over. He is trapped inside his car, and his full tank of gas is leaking. Two drivers leave their vehicles, and joined by the man's father, desperately try to pull him out of the wreck. But a spark ignites the fuel. Finally, the trapped man manages to release his harness and is pulled to safety. Queensland, Australia. Spectators expect to be thrilled by the speeding racers, which travel at over 100 miles an hour. But on this night, they got more than they bargained for. This driver loses control of his vehicle, rolling over and over, crashing through the fence and into the stand. A teenager is pinned beneath the wheel of the car, but his friends quickly free him from the wreckage. A five-year-old boy, who had wandered away from his parents to play in the stands, was also caught under the car. He suffered a fractured skull, but was able to make a full recovery. The courtroom is the place where we go seeking justice, expecting law and order. So when things go wrong in there, it can be truly terrifying. San Fernando, California. Sentencing day for Christopher DeHuff, exactly one year after he had caused a deadly car crash. As DeHuff scribbles on his notepad, the family of the victim vent their anger at the young man. Excuse me, Your Honor. Hey, you're a devil. You're a devil. Suddenly, Christopher Wageman, the Let victim's me. son, is so enraged by the killer's uncaring attitude that he loses control. He throws the courtroom microphone at DeHuff and tries to attack him. Court bailiffs quickly put an end to Christopher's vigilante justice. After calm has been restored, Christopher Wageman was detained by police, but was not charged with a crime. DeHuff received 21 years to life for his second-degree murder conviction. La Habra, California. 
It was arraignment day for a one-armed beggar, accused of gruesomely killing a 12-year-old boy by cutting him up and encasing his body parts in a bloody 200-pound cement block. He had just pled innocent to the crime, but another prisoner decided to pronounce his own sentence. For nearly 30 seconds, he punched and stomped the alleged killer. Municipal court bailiffs used pepper spray to end the attack, and 50 people had to be evacuated from the courtroom. Even prisoners have a code of honor, and one of the prime rules in that code is that harming a child is unacceptable behavior. A drive-by shooting has left a five-year-old boy dead, but the Florida Supreme Court has decided it was not premeditated and the killer's death sentence should be reduced. At a resentencing hearing, the boy's distraught grandmother held up a picture of the boy in an open casket. What it did to him. And that was all the prompting the boy's father needed. Suddenly, he launched an attack on the man who had murdered his baby boy. As the attorneys ran for cover, the angered victim's family began to extract their own revenge. To be honest, if I could have, I would have beat him to death in that courtroom. The families of the convicted killers then joined the melee as police officers and bailiffs struggled to regain control of the courtroom. Lucas and his two brothers-in-law were arrested and found in contempt of court. When we return, how could anyone live through a 50,000 volt shock? Russian jets collide in one of the world's worst air disasters. Animals turn on their trainers. And one of the most terrifying accidents ever caught on tape. All in the world's most shocking moments caught on tape, too. to the graphic nature of this program. Viewer discretion is advised. Since man first achieved flight, there have been pilots who have tested their wings at air shows with incredible displays of skill and power. Unfortunately, sometimes those amazing shows end in spectacular disaster. Trieste, Italy. Three biplanes were rehearsing a sensational stunt when one of the aircraft went wildly out of control. It plunged into a nearby lake, less than a quarter mile from where the spectators were watching the practice flight. The pilot was injured, but only needed brief hospitalization. Kissimmee, Florida. At a local air show, four planes fly in synchronized formation a stunt they had performed dozens, perhaps hundreds of times. Suddenly, disaster strikes. Clearly, the collision of the two vintage aircraft is not part of the show. The two planes plummet to the ground, where they explode in a fiery, twisted mess. Ontario, Canada. An airshow pilot was displaying his World War II training plane. Unfortunately, when the pilot began to experience engine trouble, he lost control and the plane crashed into Lake Erie. Niagara Falls. During a U.S. Navy Blue Angel airshow, two planes performing an upside-down crossover maneuver had just accidentally grazed each other when our amateur cameraman spotted this aircraft plummeting toward Earth. The pilot was able to eject, and while the plane was destroyed, he was only slightly injured. Farnborough Airfield. This transport plane was demonstrating short takeoffs and landings. And as they attempted to land at a particularly steep angle, a huge gust of wind thrust the plane downward, smashing it into the runway. The three pilots escaped without serious injury. 
Some people prefer to take flight in a less mechanical manner. And for these daredevils, a large part of the thrill is that disaster is always waiting below. Eugene, Oregon. Mike McGee and Greg Jones are about to attempt a new sport they've invented, parachute bungee jumping. Normally, a bungee is attached to a fixed object like a bridge railing. But their plan is to jump from a plane and for Greg to bungee from Mike's parachute. This video, shot by their helmet cams and a third jumper, shows how their attempt at a new sport quickly became a desperate fight for their lives. As Greg made his mid-air bungee jump, the bungee cord snapped, sending Greg into a frightening free fall. Momentarily stunned and hurling towards the ground, Greg somehow manages to deploy his safety chute. The broken bungee cord recoils and smacks Greg in the head, knocking him unconscious. The bungee then snaps skyward, smashing Mike in the groin area, seriously injuring him. Mike floats to earth as cameraman Tim McMahon bravely deflates his chute to drop down and rescue the unconscious Greg. He hooks his feet into Greg's harness, guiding the injured man to a safe landing. Of the three, Mike's injuries were the most serious, but thanks to the fast thinking of Tim McMahon, all three friends survived to jump another day. Kent, England, dressed as gorillas, a team of experienced skydivers has gathered to do a special charity dive to raise money for endangered mountain apes. A camera crew is on hand as well to record their aerial ballet. The performance proceeds without a hitch, but then something goes terribly wrong. We're not too sure exactly how it all happened, but the third guy, Dave, flew his canopy from behind to dock and he missed us, but he ended up facing us and he just hit us head on. Steve Treble's chute becomes entangled with one of his fellow jumpers. He realizes that he will not be able to release a reserve chute to break his fall. I started to scream. No! No! I saw my life go by and basically I thought that's it. I've had it. I'm dead. Treble heads to earth at bone-shattering speed. He lands with a sickening crack, and his fellow divers rush over to see if he's alive. Amazingly, Treble has survived, and even more amazingly, without one broken bone. From bulls to horses, animals rage out of control and surviving the most horrifying moment ever captured on film. All when the world's most shocking moments, caught on tape two, returns. New Zealand. It's professional stuntman Jody Hooker's birthday. To entertain the hundreds of guests, his good friend and fellow stuntman came up with a special present. I decided to blow him up for his birthday. He was turning 26 and he wanted to do so with a bang. The stunt is called the Human A-Bomb. A human torch is covered in fuel and detonated by a large fireball. I knew my friends don't get to see what we do. We thought we'd give them a taste of it live. Jody's regular stunt crew was not available on such short notice, so party guests are hastily trained to assist. Over Jody's protective fire suit is smeared a fire retardant gel. Go off, Jody! Then he is doused in 35 liters of fuel and set ablaze. And we must remind you that no one should attempt what you are about to see. At first, everything goes according to plan. 
I knew I couldn't walk towards the crowd. I had to zigzag back and forth, do some turns, give the crowd a good show, a good burn. But then, the intense heat starts to melt the protective gel and burn through the suit. I could see that he was becoming desperate. My single extinguisher just wasn't enough to deal with it. He drops to the ground, which is the signal for his crew to extinguish the flames with blankets. Normally, it takes Jody's regular stunt team three seconds to put out the blaze. But this inexperienced crew is panicked, and seconds race by. Making matters worse is the fact that the fire is using up all his oxygen. Jody is suffocating. He keeps tossing off the blankets so he can breathe, which reignites the fuel. After 30 seconds, Jody blacks out. I remember lying on the ground. I knew I was in trouble. I needed the air. I honestly thought I was, was going to die. Uh, I thought this was my last birthday. Finally, Tony rushes in and is able to get the fire extinguished. Jody, who was not seriously hurt, vowed that the next time he sets himself on fire, he would make sure to use his regular stunt crew. We may think we have tamed Mother Nature, but there are still times when pure animal instinct is the most powerful force on Earth. Wyoming, at the annual Cheyenne Rodeo, an event called the Wild Horse Race. During that race, dozens of untamed horses are set free in the track area, and teams of three cowboys have to rope saddle and ride the horse. As you can see, the horses are not exactly willing participants. South Australia, at the National Rodeo Championships, Two riders had a lot of trouble conquering their animals. This bull clearly wasn't very cooperative. And when this cowboy's hand got caught in the reins of his horse, he ended up being dragged wildly around the ring. Amazingly, neither man was seriously hurt. While our rodeo cowboys were attacked by animals they were trying to tame, our next victim was assaulted by an animal he intended to destroy. Cali, Colombia. In this bullfight, the bull definitely emerged the victor. The matador was gored repeatedly, suffering life-threatening puncture wounds to his neck and lower pelvis. The animal's savage attack put the bullfighter in intensive care, but he is expected to make a full recovery. Nicaragua. Home video shot at a small town's bull ring shows several amateur bullfighters. It's a very painful lesson, but this matador to be learns the hard way that you never turn your back on the bull. The unconscious young man has also discovered that he is not yet ready for the big leagues of bullfighting. Here a reporter meets a dog that is used to put a friendly face on law enforcement. I can take him to schools or any kind of functions like that and let people come up to him and uh, they can pet him, they can love on him. Uh, it's just, it just helps us get to the, to the kids to tell them that they shouldn't use drugs. Or the reporter's lacerations required five stitches.
but he was able to finish his report. Still to come, the most shocking moments of them all. And find out how anyone could survive a 50,000 volt blast. All when the world's most shocking moments caught on tape two continues. In all my years of law enforcement, many was the time that I saw something that was so shocking that it would take my breath away. Here are several pieces of videotape that we think might be tonight's most shocking moments caught on tape. Hampshire, England. Spectators at the largest annual international air show in the world saw what was certainly one of the most costly mid-air collisions in air show history. Two brand new Russian MiGs, priced at $53 million each, were the stars of the show. And their pilots, like America's Blue Angels, were trained to take these remarkable aircraft through a dizzying series of frightening maneuvers. That day, there was a little more cloud cover than had been expected. As one of the MiGs does a loop to a high cloud, the pilot slightly misjudged his overtaking pass on the forward jet. Suddenly, to the horror of thousands of witnesses, the rear plane seared to the other jet, his wing literally slicing the other MiG in two. look at the accident shows that if the rear jet had collided just six feet forward the wing would have killed the pilot but miraculously despite completely destroying the two aircraft both pilots ejected and landed safely while the crowd was still buzzing over the incredible disaster the pilots coolly watched their planes burn to a crisp Bangkok, Thailand. A man under the influence of a dangerous new street drug has climbed a power pole. Before rescuers could reach him, tragedy struck. The rescuers had been informed that power had been cut off to the lines. Tragically for this worker, the information was incorrect. When he touched the wire, 50,000 volts of electricity jolted his body. Fortunately, his safety strap prevented him from falling to his death. His co-workers got him safely to the ground, where he was treated for surprisingly minor injuries. The suicidal man was also safely rescued. Tonight, as we've traveled the world, we've seen a seemingly endless series of shocking imagery, which only proves that just when you think you've seen it all, something even more unbelievable happens. So be careful. And if you have a video camera, be prepared. You never know when something shocking is about to happen right before your eyes. Who knows? That video might wind up on the world's most shocking moments, volume three. Until then, I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. Good night.